Conditioned Reflex Theory It is a behaviorist theory. It is also known as association theory and classical conditioning. It is a learning theory as well. It is part of psychological foundations of education paper 2 of PA year 2. This is Kashif Ibrahim, lecturer of education at Government College Firm in Nazmabad, Karachi. With this presentation, you will be able to understand basic concepts of this theory, the straight procedure of the learning, explain the major principles and recognize examples in academic life. Ivan Pavlov was a Russian physiologist. He won the Nobel Prize in 1904 for his work on digestion. A view of the lab experimenting on dogs As part of research, he also investigated salivation. It is initial step in the digestive process. His work required to collect and measure amount of saliva when the dogs smelled food. His lab assistant was responsible to brought food to the dogs. One day, he observed a very interesting effect. Just at the sight of the lab assistant, or even upon the sound of his footsteps, the dogs would start salivating. He observed that the dogs were responding not only on the basis of a biological need, hunger, but also as a result of some type of learning. In order to study further this type of learning, he designed a lab experiment on the basis of the condition of the original experiment. Similar to this illustration, a dog made immobile, a tube fixed surgically for collecting saliva in a container in front of the dog, a food ball is situated in the bell position. Initially, he made two observations separately. He placed food before the dog. The dog salivated. He also rang a bell in front of the dog. The dog had no reaction. Just then, he placed food before the dog that rang the bell first, and he provided the food to the dog the same way many times. At the end, when he only rang the bell, the dog salivated. The bell alone was sufficient to cause salivation. Why? What is just happened here? Consider another condition. This is another illustration. The details are the same as the previous one except this time a light is used instead of a bell. Again. Initially, he made two observations separately. He placed food before the dog. The dog salivated. He also turned on a light in front of the dog. The dog had no reaction. Just then, he placed food before the dog 
but turned on the light first, and he provided the food to the dog the same way many times. At the end, when he only turned on the light, the dog salivated. The light alone was sufficient to cause salivation. Why? Why the dog reacted this way? Pavlov concluded that the dog was responding as a result of some type of learning. What is this type of learning? How does this kind of learning take place? The learning Pavlov noticed was classical conditioning. It is pairing of a conditioned stimulus with an unconditioned stimulus that prompts without thinking a conditioned response. As in the previous illustrations, the food is an unconditioned stimulus. This is natural. It is displayed in cream. The salivation is a natural response. This is an unconditioned response. Whereas sound of the bell or the light is a conditioned stimulus. This is neutral. It is displayed in white. The conditioning phase involves pairing a condition with an unconditioned stimulus for some time, such as the light or the sound with the food. The salivation to the light or the sound of the bell is a conditioned response. This is the end. It means the dogs had learned that they would get the food after the bell sounded or the light turned on. Let's focus on the stages and essential principles. The first one is contiguity. The new learning occurs through temporal contiguity. To form the association, the unconditioned and conditioned stimuli must occur at the same time. Say, providing food right after ringing the bell. Also, providing food right after turning on the light. The next is acquisition. The new learning occurs through pairing a new stimulus with an unlearned stimulus. Say, the dog salivated at the sound of the bell. Also, the student was in tension due to homework given by a particular teacher. Extinction. It is the opposite of the acquisition. The new learning doesn't necessarily last for a lifetime. Say, the dog stops salivating after repeatedly ringing the bell in the absence of food. Also, if the student continues to succeed in classroom test, nervousness or anxiety will gradually disappear. The next is generalization. The new learning has same response to the similar but not identical stimuli. Say, if a child is bitten by a dog, the child may fear not only that particular dog, but all dogs. Also, the student was failed in chemistry. Now he is anxious about all tests.
discrimination it is the opposite of the generalization the new learning has different responses to the similar but not identical stimuli say a child may show a fear response to only freely running dogs also the student was not anxious about physics test he or she was anxious on the for chemistry the student differentiated between physics and chemistry now some real world examples a child may learn that when the doorbell rings someone will visit his or her home similarly discussion of outing can bring back happy emotions due to association that developed in the previous trip and employ associated a sound of his boss footsteps with his critical comments these comments produced in him a negative emotional reaction so the footsteps started to evoke that reaction as well and his work began to suffer likewise a person has painful experience of medical treatment if he then has to have a long course of treatment during which he experiences no discomfort gradually the original learned responses will fade away some more examples but these are classroom examples a student fails in a test and is criticized which produces anxiety thereafter the student pairs tests with anxiety similarly the student experiences the warmth and respect in the class the student may feel the same for the school in general a student observes a fight in a classroom which produces fear then a student may pair classroom with fear likewise a student eats something and sick immediately then the student may link the type of food with illness this is not a complete theory for learning it does explain only an unintentional behavior it is not as effective in explaining intentional behaviors such as why a student studies hard for a test or likes physics better than chemistry this is the end and you are given some questions to review your learning first what is learning describe conditioned reflex theory second differentiate between a conditioned and unconditioned stimulus third pavlov's work is important in understanding issues of academic life discuss